If you already find out that there are cards, some weird Armenian words in it, it says Barev, which means high in Armenian. Okay, I wanted to share these cards with you. And also, it's a good opportunity to teach some Armenian lessons. Where else I can find this many not Armenian speakers to teach them how to say Barev? So, you can try now. Look at the, your neighbor and say Barev. That's how we say hi in Armenian. And also, what I want to ask you to do, would you please pass this to someone? Just do it again, smile, say Barev, and just simply pass it to someone. Next person or front of you. Thank you. Thank you. Just passing is important. <laughs> so we have some basic information about the unique life, which is our Armenian ministry church information. I would greatly appreciate if you can pass this to someone who speaks Armenian. That will help us to our ministry, invite more people. I also wanted to celebrate what God had done during the last two years as we started our Sunday services. As most of you know, it was just us, four of us, my family, um, my wife, myself, and two kids. And we wanted this church to exist, to be born. And by God's grace, through your prayers, through your generosity, it finally happened. And I believe that the foundation is laid. I believe that as Pastor Billy preached a series on new territories, I believe that we are entering to a new territory. I so wanted to see this church grown, so we made another baby. That's the best organic way to grow your church. But unfortunately, I'm 40, we probably too late to have more. I wish we were 25 to make more babies. But anyways, we will call people, we will reach out with the power of gospel to make the kingdom grow. Amen? So this year, one of the greatest blessings for me and answered prayer is our children's ministry, which we didn't have. And I was praying and praying and praying. Finally, I felt like, okay, how long am I, am I going to wait? So I told my wife, you preach, I go to do children's ministry. So I went downstairs for the first time and I preached to these four kids, two mine and two others. And it never stopped since then. It just started there. We have now like 12 up to 15 kids coming. We have five, six beautiful Christians who are volunteering every week, every Sunday. So I believe that that's a huge progress we are making. And also, we already have baptized, I believe, seven people. And I was surprised to see that for this coming baptism, which we are going to have in November, we already have five people signed up. It's amazing, it's good, God is moving, His kingdom is growing. Amen. So, the reason I wanted you to pass this, because the message I'm going to share, I titled it, Pass It to Others. Pass it to others. And I believe this is something very important for all Christians, all of us, to learn and when I was thinking about this topic last night, I was thinking, it is amazing how God created us. I mean, I believe that all our life we will continue to be amazed how amazingly this body, mind, and soul build. I hate to go to doctors. I hope someone would say amen. <laughs> but when we go... It doesn't matter what part of your body has problem. When they start to explain how it works, it's amazing. You're just, oh my God, I didn't know that this little thing can do so much things in us. So I was thinking that this fact that passing to others is so important that when God created us as humans, there, he put something like built-in feature that we are passing to our next generation our own genes, like our own character. It automatically goes to them. And I started to Google to find out more information because I said, I think this is so good because that's the way we are built. Every time we want to reproduce, every time we want to have new family member, 
we pass to them what we have. Even without thinking. Amen? So I found this interesting quote on Google. It says, genetic inheritance occurs due to genetic material in the form of DNA being passed from parents to their offspring. When organisms reproduce, all the information, and this is important, for growth, survival, and reproduction for the next generation is found in DNA passed down from the parent to the next generation. So every parent automatically passes these three important things to the next generation for growth, survival, and for reproduction. And I thought, wow, this is so cool. And I believe what is true in physical life, it is true for spiritual life. And I believe that God wants us not only to exist, be saved, and ex be excited about our salvation, but he wants us to pass what we got, to pass what others need for their own survival, for their own growth, for their own reproduction. Amen? Amen. So there is something in each of us that we can and we must to pass to others. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Paul writes a letter to Timothy who was his disciple. He came to know Paul during Paul's traveling. And he became a very good disciple of Christ. He was young, energetic. He was full of faith. And Paul actually writes a lot of things to him. But I think one of the most important things he encourages Timothy is this. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, teach this to faithful men. Hey, Timothy, I poured so much in you. And you were a really good receiver. You were a good disciple taking everything that I thought to you, which is good. But it not ends there. He says... I want you to pass it to faithful men. And it even doesn't stop there. The reason to pass to others, it says that they may be able to teach others. So it shows that God really desires that his children, his people will have this mentality that whatever I learn, whatever I'm getting from the Lord through the teaching, through the ministries, through all kinds of things around us, God wants us to pass it to others that they may pass to others too. You know, if you have been Christian for a long, long time, you probably know who is Abraham. He is he called father of faith. And it says the greatest thing about Abraham, we often focus is this. Abraham believed in God and it counted to him as a righteousness. But there is something more. If you will read Genesis chapter 18, I don't have it. It just came to my mind to add. When God speaks about Abraham to his angels, says, I know that Abraham will pass all my commandments to his next coming generations. So God made promise for Abraham because he's faithful, da, 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 da. But then he says, and I know there is something very important. This guy is not going to hold what I bless him. He will pass everything that I give. So that was one of the reasons I believe God kind of paid attention to Abraham. Because he was that kind of guy who wouldn't hold it for himself, but would pass to other generations. Turn to someone and say, pass it. Amen. So Paul says, Timothy, I want you to pass to people that they can pass to others. And I, I know this is very important for two kind of people. We must pass the good news of the gospel to those who are not saved. Which is every Christian, we are saved to save others. We are saved to share God's saving power to those who are not saved yet. But also I believe once we are, self, we are saved and even if we live in the church around the Christian people, church people, there are so many things we need to share with others. We need to teach others. We need to teach 
others how to raise godly kids, how to pray, how to worship, how to be faithful, how to tithe, all these things. Because many times what we learn, it becomes normal for us and we don't realize there are people, they have no idea how to do that. And then it comes to a point when we are so dissatisfied with life, we don't know what to do. We want to grow and there is no like space for us to grow. I find something interesting. Every time that I have a problem and I'm struggling in a certain area, let's say I have a problem with forgiveness. And you may think, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Probably more than you as a pastor, I need to forgive people. Because you pour your life, you pour your family, everything you have in people. And then once they feel good, they said, goodbye. And I constantly need to keep my heart soft, loving, forgiving. And it happens to me, whenever I have struggle in an area, someone comes to me and said, listen, pastor, I want to forgive this guy and I don't know how to forgive. Can you help me, please? <laughs> and that's where you say, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Bible. And you start to quote verses you know. And actually, you realize that this way, some kind of healing comes to your own life. That's why I encourage every one of you, it doesn't matter how hard your life, you still can pass it to others and be healed. So the passing is important for two reasons. Because when you pass, you bless someone with the something they don't have. But also, passing helps you to grow. Amen? The information comes here first. We learn the verses, we learn the truth, we know what the word says. And it is good because most of the battles we are having is here. But then this should come here. This 15 centimeters, I don't know inches how much it would be, but this short distance. For me, in some cases, it takes few years. But as much as I will pass the things I know, it will help me to grow myself. Amen? So it is very important for us, for Christians, not only to know things, but to put it in practice. Leave it out. We live in a society, we hear this often and often, like, okay, you believe in God, keep it private. It's for yourself. I want to say, keep it not private. Amen? Leave it out. You don't need to say words, but leave it in a way that people may see, wow, there is an other way to live. Last week I was teaching at Unique Life Armenian Ministry. The book of Philemon, it's just one chapter. It's one of my favorites. It's only one chapter. Paul wrote that because he was in a, such a situation with few of his favorite people. Huge problem. There was a man, very rich, famous, godly man by name Philemon. Back then, it was okay. Even the law of the country was allowing people to own slaves. So Philemon, though we, he became a Christian, he had slaves working for him. Back then, to have a, sla a slave, it's like having a car or any things help us to live these days. So the slaves were doing all the job. One of his slaves, by the name of Onesimus, steals his money and runs away from Philemon. Such a bad thing. Really. And then he goes to Ephesus where Paul is in prison. Somehow he meets Apostle Paul, this sinner, slave. And he gives his life to Christ. And Paul finds out that, okay, this slave Onesimus actually connected to my friend Philemon. But the problem is big because by the law of the country, slave owner in these cases were allowed to punish, even to put prison, even to kill his own slave. But he's a Christian. Then there is this slave who betrayed, he did really harm to his own master, but became a Christian. 
And then behind them, huge, imagine Onesimus is a slave. Behind him, there are hundreds of slaves in the same city watching what's happening. How he will be treated. The same with Philemon. So Paul stands there in between this huge conflict. And writes this beautiful letter. If you have time, read it again. That will teach you so many things. He uses language, most loving, smartest way to touch all the problems. But one thing he says, and I really like, written in chapter 6, it says, and I keep praying for you, Philemon. Which shows, hey, I, I've prayed for you a lot. But now, in this case, I'm praying for you that this faith we hold in common keeps showing up in the good things we do. The faith we have. We often emphasize that by faith we are saved. If you believe Jesus Christ, confess with your mouth, that's all you need, just saved, hallelujah, you go to heaven. But Paul says, hey, I really appreciate you are saved and you declare that I am Christian and you have faith in your heart. But what I pray, I pray that you will do things which emphasize how beautiful, how loving and forgiving Christ is. Yes, you have all the rights to sue him. You have even rights to kill him. But I pray that you made this decision that I am going to do something which will show the beauty of Christ. Amen? So it shows how important for us as Christians not only to have faith but to live out and pass it to others as an example. And I believe, and even, uh, I, th I believe 21st verse says, and the reason I'm writing this to you, I have faith that you will do more than I ask you to do. Let us learn to do more than the word says to us. Amen? Amen. There are some verses sometimes probably we say, I wish this word is, wasn't there. <laughs> Like pray for your enemies. It's really hard. Amen. One day, we were still in Armenia. I told my wife, okay, call your mom and give me the phone. So she calls my mother-in-law. And she picks the phone. And I said, hey, I call her by name. Her name is Zarika. I said, I just wanted to say that I love you. And she was, oh, my gosh. She never heard me saying, like, I love you. Her. So I told her, I love you. I pr pray for you. And she was surprised. She said, what happened to you, Herman? I never. <laughs> I said, well, you know, I was reading my Bible and I met this verse saying, love your enemies. So the first person <laughs> came to my mind is, was you. <laughs> and she was, ah, I don't know. What the... <laughs> yeah. So, but now she lives with us here. So pray for me. <laughs> some, some problems ongoing, okay? You can't. You just need mercy daily. <laughs> yeah. So passing to others. One of the greatest miracles Jesus performed is the multiplication of the bread. Multitude of people follows him. They are so hungry to hear from Jesus, they forgot to bring food with them. So a few days later, Jesus said, okay. Actually, disciples come to him and said, Master, release these people. They, these poor people, they are hungry. Let them go find food. Jesus said, you feed them. And they said, we don't have. So Jesus said, bring what you have. Okay? We always have less than the problem is. But it doesn't mean the problem will remain there. Amen? We always have less than needed but if we start to use that little that's where the miracle happens so jesus it's written in mark chapter 6 39 to 44 then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups say in groups imagine few thousand people and jesus said okay guys i'm going to do a miracle but before i do there are a few things you must do one of those you gotta be in a group Okay, sit them in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and in fifties. 
And when he had taken the five loaves and two fish, he took up to heaven, blessed, and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them. Okay? So when they did it, it says they all ate and 12 basket leftovers were there. And everyone was, wow. But there are two secrets in this picture that shows, even for our own life, I believe this principle is so powerful. To get blessing from the Lord, to see miracles in your life, number one rule we see here is to be in a group. To sit with your group. We have many life groups around the city. And this is another group. You may not be able to go to life groups, but it is important for you to be in a group of believers. And I heard many people say, well, I believe in Jesus Christ. He knows my name, and I don't need to go to church because when I go to church, all these weird people come, and they cause so much problems. I know. I was raised in the church. I've seen how pastors cry. My dad was a pastor when I was a kid. I promised myself I'm not going to become a pastor. Okay? Probably the most painful wounds I got happens in the church. But not, that's not the end of the story. I want to focus on the blessings that I got when I was in the group of believers. Because every blessing in my life happened when I was connected with Christians. I can quote, I can write a book of testimonies, financial, spiritual, emotional provision of God, how it came to me through the group of believers I was connected. If you want the heavens be open, if you want your life be blessed, be connected. We are one body. And I discovered, I see a lot that in Armenian culture. Let me do a confession on behalf of my nation. <laughs> pride. Pride. I believe one of the main problems we as a nation struggle. And I don't know. I think that's common to other nations. But that's what we have. We have even a joke. It says... A guy w was working on the roof, like fifth floor. Then he falls from the roof. Hits so bad. So he jumps up immediately, like, do this, the dust. Goes behind the building and dies there. He didn't want other people to see. <laughs> like, come on, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. And he goes behind the building and <laughs> dies. Pride. Pride kills people. Pride is number one sin. If you struggle with other sins, God reaches his hand. Amen? Amen. James, I believe 4, 6, yeah, says, God resists the pride. In Armenian translation, it says, God turns his back to prideful. Okay? Sometimes we come to church, I'm okay. Yeah, no problem. As a pastor, I meet people, they come to me, start to cry. Okay, I have this problem with my kids. How long this has been? Two years. Two years. Why do you didn't come early? They want to hide it. Again, there are things you can share with everyone. But I believe God so loves us. He has people for us. Amen. Amen? So we should be in the group. That how Jesus said. He said, before I do miracle, be in the group. Because every prophetic word comes through someone. Amen. Every financial help, even information. Someone is there said, hey, why are you so afraid? Just go here, do this, 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 then boom, 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 done. Because I believe God provides everything we need in the house of the Lord. The second thing we see in this picture is to pass to others. He blesses, he makes it peace, gives the first peace. Imagine people didn't eat for three days, how hungry they are. <laughs> Like when we are having party in our home, like if it's a little longer than they, it was expected, my kids are, what they do, they jump, they fight. Who is first? Three days, starving. And Jesus breaks the bread, gives the first person. He want a bite, said no. Pass it. 
<laughs> the next one wants to you know, pass it. So they start to pass it one by one. And as they pass, miracles starts to happen. It flows, it flows, it flows till everyone has a peace. We want to hide it for ourselves. We want to have it all because this is my God provided for me. This is my prayer answered. It's yes. But can you pass it what you have received to others? Because if you pass, more will come on your way. Amen. So two, two principles in this passage we see. Be in the group and pass it to others. 1 Corinthians 15.3 Paul speaks about communion. We enjoy every communion service once a month. We remember what the Lord has done. So Paul, say, Paul says, what I delivered to you first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. 2,000 years later, we do the same thing. We pass when we pass the cup, when we pass the bread, we declare Jesus has died for us. Amen? It shows the importance of passing. But also I want you to pay attention on something. How hard was it back then for Paul to pass something to someone? Probably they had to travel walking or having a horse or something. How easy it is in our days. We all have cell phones, right? Most of us. Blessed are those who don't have. <laughs> but most of us have. <laughs> Two days ago was celebration in my hometown. They were celebrating the day of the city. So I made a video. Hey, it wasn't Christian content. I just wanted my city people see me. said, hey, just God bless you. Have a great day. Next day I look at that. Like a thousand people watch that. around the world, how easy it is for you to share something. Even right now, if you take out your phone, pick a card, or do a screenshot, or write a verse, even before service ends, and post it, share with someone. It will go as crazy as you have no idea how fast it will go places. Amen? So Paul says, I've shared what I received, and we learned from him that we should share. It's amazing how many angels God has. Any idea? In the book of Revelation, John says, Then I saw a multitude of angels singing to him. I saw thousands upon thousands. Then he says, I saw 10,000 multiply 10,000 singing to him. It's like over 100 million angels. And when I was a child, they were teaching me that for every person, God has an angel. I don't know, maybe. Maybe more. But there are so many angels can serve the Lord. Like, why then God doesn't send his angels when someone is in a need? We saw that in the Bible, God sent angels to feed people, to share the gospel with them, give them a command, gave them a direction. But why it doesn't happen every day? Like God can do this like this. But he is not sending his angels. Because he wants me to go. Because he wants me to pass. Because when I am passing what I receive, it helps me to grow. Say amen. amen. God so loves you. He wants you to grow. That's why. When your neighbor is in need and he needs mercy, you pray mercy and God says, no, mercy is in you, okay? You go, show mercy to that person. And when we do, we grow in that area. See how many opportunities we have. But we miss those opportunities because we don't want to share. And I want to say a few reasons, most possibly, why we don't want to share with others. Whatever we have. Sometimes we don't realize that what we have, it's meaningful, it's powerful. Again, when we own it, it becomes simple for us. 
Sometimes we don't share the good news because we compare ourselves with pastors. Let's say, oh, I can't talk like Pastor Billy, so I better be silent. No. Each of us are so unique and different. And each of us have our circle of influence that others don't have. The reason I do the Armenian ministry here, because what I do there, none of you can do. If there is no other reason, Barev, Zez, and the language is one reason. So I have my circle, and each of us have our own circle. But we often don't pass, don't reach, because we think what we have is not that important. Or I can't do as others do. I can't pray for someone like they do. And we stop doing it. Stop sharing. Don't compare yourself. Just be yourself. Turn to someone and say, be yourself. I am not an evangelist with my calling. All my life I knew that as a Christian I must share. That always been the hardest part for me. I want to confess that. So I decided to take some classes to go to meetings where they teach how to evangelize. So I went this one. It says, okay, there are two main questions you should ask people. Go and say, do you believe in God? Most possibly they will say yes. If you die, where you will go? Heaven or hell? If they said we go to heaven, ask them why you believe you go and introduce Christ. I practice it in front of mirror. <laughs> I just try to do things. Never worked for me. <laughs> and I felt guilty because I couldn't be like them who, who are successfully doing that, knocking doors, going there. But then I find out, okay, God, I have my own way to do things. For me, it's always start with Baref. Okay? I don't start with John 3.16. I don't start with my church is great. I just start with Baref. Hi. Hey, how are you? Oh, you look so nice. And then, and then, and then, and then I decided, okay, I will share my stories instead of the stories in the Bible. At least for the beginning. Amen? Last week, Sunday early, I landed in LAX from East Coast. I went there to celebrate with my friends, 50th anniversary of the church. Great people, great time. So I come home early Sunday morning and I had to preach. I called an Uber. The car came, I opened the door, young lady, and the first seat was full of like backpack, other personal items. She said, oh, I'm so sorry, can you sit with the back? Okay, so I sat there, we started to talk. And I look at my GPS, it showed 30 minutes. Okay, I knew I had 30 minutes. And we just started to talk. I asked her, where are you from? And she said, Puerto Rico, originally, but I live in Florida. I came here to pursue my dreams, dreams but now it has been like five months or seven months. I drive like crazy this Uber morning till evening, and it is so hard. And when she said Puerto Rico, I said, yeah, I know a guy from Puerto Rico. He has a great book. His name is Nicky Cruz. When he was young, like seven, eight years old, his dad kicked him out from home to go to New York because he was so bad. He goes to New York, he becomes gang member, then he starts to lead the gang. And then I stopped there, I said, well, check his story. He has a powerful story of forgiveness. And she said, yeah, I think I need to watch that because I need to forgive some people. People are so bad in these days. And she started to pour her heart, like how people treat her, how bad the life is. And I was listening. So we came at our home. And she was ready. I said, well, can I pray for you? And she said, yeah. I prayed. She started to cry. At the very end, I gave a card. And I said, there is a great church right here because we, are, we live next to the church. I said, if you have time, just come. We will, you will meet some great people. And actually, I am one of the pastors. <laughs> I said, oh, my God, I can't believe you are a pastor. <laughs> and she was so, she, oh, my God, can I hug you? And thank you for praying for me. This was so powerful. I felt peace. Deal. Done. Because I, I knew I should share, but I was just myself. I didn't want to be Billy Graham. 
We can't be someone else beside us. Amen. But the reason many times we, af we are afraid to share because we think we can't do as others do. Amen. Start wherever you are. I have three kids. I use this example a lot. I am sure three of them, 13, 9, and 9 months old, three of them can say something about myself in a unique way. People would know they love me. Amen. So wherever you are, just share with others what you have received. Tell them how grateful you are for the things God has done in your life. Okay? You don't need to know who is the beast in the book of Revelation. I don't know either. Till I get there, there are so many more important things I want to learn. Amen? And the last thing I want to mention is story written in 2 Kings chapter 7. City of Samaria were surrounded with the enemies so long people inside of the city started to starve. They were killing their own babies to eat because the famine was so tough, so hard. There were few people outside of city, lepers. They weren't allowed to go into the city. So they said, they prayed actually, people in the city for God's deliverance. And God did a miracle. During one night, he kicked out all the enemies and they ran away. They were scared. So the enemy, the armies of enemies left, leaving their items there. So these lepers talked to each other, said, hey, anyways, our life is not in good shape. We are dying here. If we go to the enemy, they might kill us. But anyways, we are dying a day soon early. Let's try. Let's go see what's happening there. So when they go there, they find out the tents are full of food, gold, silver, everything they could dream. No enemies. The enemy is gone. So what it says, it said, then they entered the first tent. They ate and ate again. Then they took as much gold they can. They hide it they went out they came back to another tent they did it a few times and it reminds me of myself and some other christians we come to this great conference and oh, hallelujah so good so good i received so much and then i go to the next conference i receive more 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 blessing after blessing after blessing and it's all about us, how good it is. Then they said, and then they said, we are doing, we are not doing right. I think that's a very good realization. We are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we are remaining silent. Let us go tell other people that the enemy is defeated. And they went out, they knocked the door and said, hey, God did a miracle. Amen. Today we have a choice to find another tent, then another tent. Or to say ourselves, it's not good. I should go find people who are starving and share what I have with them. Amen. Yes. Can we decide today? Today. That we are going to share, we are going to pass what we receive for free. Whatever you received, pass it to others. It could be the salvation, it could be the good news, it could be prayer, it could be financial blessing. Just pass it to someone. Because it helps you to grow and it blesses someone else. Amen? Amen. Let's stand before the Lord. Four years ago, before I left my home church, I had to preach my last message there. Very emotional moment. People were crying. They really, they really lo loved me, and they still love me. And first thing I told them, I said, I'm so thankful that you've been so patient with me. You have been so merciful. Because you let me grow like practicing how to preach on you you always been there listening to me when i started and i remember my first message they 
handed me the mic. They told that, okay, you are going to share. And I was, okay, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> amen, <laughs> hallelujah, God. <laughs> and then the easiest thing, I closed my eyes and said, let's pray. <laughs> so if you see me preaching today, okay, it's because one day some people trusted me, gave me opportunity to share. I don't know if it blessed them, but it helped me to grow where I am today. Amen. So let us pass to others what we receive. It's mercy, it's love, blessing, whatever it is you received from the Lord. Have this mindset. I want to pass it to someone else. There are people whom you can disciple. There are people whom you can bless. There are people whom you can show the way. There are people in every one's life here. In Jesus' name.